The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 147 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I am joined, by, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, it feels like an April Fool's joke. We're still here in quarantine, man. How's it going? We are still quarantined. Yeah, you know, I really miss the uh, the clips. You know, I'm starting <laughs> to miss those at the beginning of the episodes. Yeah. Well, I did a little bit but, last week. from. Uh, the, I was going to try and pull something from the yeah. iRacing stuff. I just didn't get a chance to today, but... Uh, I was going to try to. It's there, all was, good, man. there was some decent audio out there from the iRacing stuff this weekend. Uh, Fox did some stuff and Dale Jr. did some stuff and it, it was it was decent. There was some good behind the scenes stuff. The guys doing the of uh, the Fox Radioactive. That's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know who the guy is, but the last two weeks there's been Radioactives and I've really enjoyed those. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Very, very much. And so, yes, there's some good stuff out there. I also figured out and I probably should save it for shout outs. I'll save it for shout outs. We'll, we'll go. We'll go back to that. Um, <laughs> so, again, we, we had some racing this week, James. Um, I know you didn't get really on board with it, but uh, but there was some racing. We uh, went to the virtual Texas Motor Speedway this weekend for the NASCAR or the E NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series. And Timmy Hill gets the win. The Timmy Hill. The Timmy Hill wins, holds off Ryan Priest in a green white checker at the finish. Um, the bump and run bump and run. Yeah. Hey, bump Byron Byron, man, too bad. I mean, not terrible finish this week, but still not great when he yes. led the entire race. He's led the most laps both races so far and uh, still hasn't gotten that win. So but we know who the best I racing driver is. He just doesn't have the wins. Yep, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, very cool. Timmy Hill gets the win um, again. You know, we talked about it a little bit last week. It's fun to see some of these guys that don't get the exposure in the cup series, getting a chance to show their stuff. Um, Ryan Priest finishes second, you know, side by side with Timmy Hill at the line. Was Garrett Smithley up there too? Smithley was up there the entire race as well. They were, they were all running together. It was, uh, it was a better race. First of all, it was a better race. The track was great. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if they did the pre-race thing, um, la the week before. I don't think they did, but they had a qualifying race beforehand where a bunch of other guys were, were racing for, I think two spots or four spots to get into the field. Mm -hmm. And it was caution free. So no cautions, 30 laps at Texas. And it was like watching Daytona and Talladega. It was so good. It was over super quick. They had it on uh, enascar.com. They had it streaming in the morning at 11 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock yeah, in the morning. I don't remember anyway, but it was really, really, really good. Um, Alex LeBay from the NASCAR Penny Series won that um, to advance on. And there was some bumping and running there. Uh, Chase Briscoe, I think it was, got wrecked. Um, leading or running up front and then didn't get, get to run on the big show as a result, but that was the good race, the best race of the day. Um, but, uh, but the, the big finale was pretty good too. It was decent. Um, about the only thing I can really say about it, James, is that it feels a little rushed. And I think part of that is because they've got a small time slot that they're trying to squeeze it in. And part mm -hmm. of it is, is that it's not real NASCAR you're you're at the speed of this game so cautions go the speed that the game tells the cautions to go and things like that so it's a little bit different and, and you'll you'll notice that like Fox on a race weekend has a lot more control than they do during this iRacing thing this is it's all being produced by iRacing and they get a feed to Fox and then Fox calls the race over top of it whereas Fox is in charge of the camera angles. Fox is the one on the horn to NASCAR saying, give us another lap. We're still under cosh or still under commercial, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's, you can notice, I'm sure to most people watching it, they don't notice why it is, but you notice the difference a little bit because of that. And I think that has a lot to do with why it is, but it's uh, it was a good show. I think, I think it was a better race than the first one. Um, they, they, I racing took control of it. The, from my understanding is the first race, iRacing let the game handle it for like the first half of it and the game mm -hmm. kept putting cautions out and that's why there were so many cautions at the beginning and then iRacing took control of it whereas this one was all officiated by iRacing so they ran the cautions when they happened and that worked pretty well they pretty much reserved cautions for wrecks at the front of the field not the back of the field there were some questionable calls I think there was one that happened at the front 
that happened during commercial break that they didn't throw a caution for. Um, I would, I guess if, if they were running for money, then there'd probably been some people with some legitimate complaints, but because it's a fun thing, who cares? You know? Right. Right. So, um, and, uh, Daniel Suarez got parked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw that. That was good. Yeah. Tried to wreck Ty Dillon or Austin Dillon. I don't know. One of the Dillons. And uh, then claimed on uh, on social media that it was his dog that did it. Right. <laughs> so right. he must he must have been hanging out with the rucks. They must have given is, given him some vi- advice on how to. <laughs> is uh, has nobody said anything about Kyle Busch gassing it into the car in front of him after he got wrecked? <laughs> they, I mean, that, they, am I the only one who saw that? They talked about it on the broadcast, okay, I good. think. Good, good. But uh, nothing ever came of it. Um, yeah. Speaking of Kyle, Kyle put up a feed on his YouTube channel of just a shot of him through the whole race. And it is, it's kind of cringy to watch because he's just so irritated. It's like completely opposite of Denny Hamlin racing. He's just so mad the whole Probably time. Like the car the whole time too in real life. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Well, and then he's, you get, you got Brexton running around in the background um, yelling, let's go daddy or something like that. Just over and over and over and over and over again. It's oh like, my gosh. He's a good kid and everything. And he's a kid. I get it. You know, whatever, but God, it was annoying. And then <laughs> Samantha is there too. And she doesn't exactly have the most unannoying voice in the world. <laughs> and so like, I don't know if Kyle was upset because of the car or just in general. <laughs> Is that what hell is being uh, <laughs> in Kyle Bush's house during quarantine? Maybe it could be. It could that be. be what, that might be hell. I mean, he that. did. He did have headphones on, so he likely blocked out a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrible. So um, one thing I did want to mention, though, and it was you know they made light of it in during the the broadcast, but last week Denny Hamlin got the win with a essentially forty thousand dollar racing rig. This week, Timmy Hill won with a with a steering wheel clamped on his desk. I looked it up before the podcast. The G27 Logitech racing wheel, first of all, they don't make it anymore. You can't get it new. Um, when they did make it about 10 years ago, it was probably about 300 bucks. You can pick them up for $200 on eBay right now if you want to pick one up. So, um, you know, not that expensive to get into it. And he, he beat them all. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had the text to you. I won't say out loud what I texted to you, but... Um, him winning with him winning with that setup really makes me happy. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. Kyle Larson, he was showing his rig during uh, during the pre-race. He said his run somewhere in between the two. So, so. in between two hundred and forty thousand. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, this I've week- enjoyed. Uh, I have enjoyed the highlights and. Yeah. To be honest with you, man, um, seeing the uh, seeing the viewing numbers, especially when they put it up on Fox on Fox on Fox proper. Yeah. Um, you know, one point. What is it? One point three million and change. Yep, something like that. And it, and it wasn't even not, on like all of Fox because there right. were a lot of Fox networks that didn't pick it up. Our local Fox affiliate did not pick it up. Yeah, we had uh, had it on FS1 in our area, but yep. um, still, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. You know, uh, I saw that. You know. ESPN was picking up a little bit on it with some of their shows that never talk. Yeah, Sports Center uh, had Dale Jr. on, which was awesome. Yep. Yeah, they've been doing some plugs on it on Sports Center, and then uh, around the horn had it as a has a had a big uh, segment on it as far as you know how realistic it is and how yeah. they actually all enjoyed watching it. And I'm like, wow, these people never watch NASCAR, never talk about it. So, right. Uh, so that's good. You know, hopefully some eyeballs are being drawn to the sport a little bit. And, you know, if we can get the show on the road here before too long, um, you know, maybe there'll be some stickiness here too, for some people. Yeah. Um, Dale jr. On sports center explaining the difference between iRacing racing and, and really real racing. And basically he did the clean version of it. What he normally talks about on his show, but, uh, he said, you know, it's that seat of the pants feel his, uh, his definition on his podcast is, it's that feeling in your ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know that's the only difference he said is just feeling the car, everything else. It's it's there, it's all there, and you know I know from I mean I've never driven a race car, but I know how realistic NASCAR 2003 was back in 2003 when it came out, and that's what this code is based off of, and it's yep. so much more advanced than it was back then, and so I can just imagine what it's like. I mean, it's, yeah, it's something. So, 
yeah, pretty cool stuff, man. Um, everybody's jumping on the esports bandwagon. I know I saw that there's a Madden thing going to be going on. There's yeah, NBA 2K tournament. Yeah, uh, some some of the players picking up teams and, and doing that. Just um, no sport can do it like ours does. But you know, even um, this is know, the one where NASCAR actually is ahead of the game of everybody else. Yeah, for once. Yep, IndyCar did did their race this week at at Watkins Glen. Featuring um, seven times. Yep, fe- featuring Jimmy Johnson. I I caught part of it. I did not watch the whole thing. I would uh, I would have t- tuned in had Michigan won that um, won that bracket. I would have made a made it a point to check it out. Yeah, that, um, was, that was something I was interested in. <laughs> yeah, I would have too. Um, but it was you know it the I think they did it without cautions. Um, it was a little bit more spread out and stuff and. I don't know. It just it just wasn't as good, but it was it was cool. Lee Diffie was uh, was doing the broadcast and everything, so they had the IndyCar guys like normal. Um, it was cool. It, it wasn't bad. It just it I don't know. The IndyCars on iRacing don't excite me quite as much as the NASCAR stuff does. Yeah, um, I mean it's the same way in real life too. I like IndyCar, but it's just not NASCAR. Right, right. So and I, I I'm not familiar enough with the with the with the IndyCar drivers and stuff. Like I tried to watch the you know the actual e NASCAR series. And I, I can watch highlights of it, but I just don't know the drivers well enough to sit down and watch a full race. And that's the only reason I can sit down and watch this this mm-hmm. pro invitational is because it's the actual drivers running in it, you know? Right, right. And it's kind yeah. of fun to see them. I, I guess if they were all good at it, it wouldn't be as much fun either because it's fun seeing people like Jimmy Johnson screw up and, and yeah, stuff it's got like the, that. Yeah, uh, it's got a prelude to the dream yeah. factor to it, you yeah, know? very much so. Yep. Um. What else? And then uh, tonight, iRacing has uh, World of Outlaws, late model sprint cars on Fox Sports 1 mm-hmm. as well. I know Kyle Busch is running in it because he was yeah, up he on is. Twitter. So yep. uh, maybe he'll do better on dirt. Maybe it'll entice him to get in a truck at Eldora one of these days. Maybe. Fun. maybe He's he's won, El- he's yeah. won at Eldora before in a he's, late model. He's the last winner at Eldora. So, yeah, the, uh, the very last champion of the prelude. Yep. Yep. I've seen him race there in person a couple of times in yeah. the in the uh, late model. He ran the old Rowdy Bush scheme there a few times. Jealous of that. Very jealous of that. <laughs> no, did you see that racing reference is throwing up the iRacing stats for no, all the drivers? No. Yeah, if you go to uh, exhibition or unclassified race results, um, they're throwing all the iRacing stuff on there. So That's awesome. That's Kyle Busch really is, cool. Kyle Busch is credited with uh, two 2020 starts for the Dixie v- Vodka 150 and the O'Reilly Auto Parts 125. That's awesome. So, yeah, they're throwing the iRacing stats on there for these guys now. That's really cool. I like the fact, again, that we're taking this seriously, but also not, you know? It's a wink-wink seriousness, yeah. yeah. It's fun. I, I hope that it continues the way it is. They don't put prize money up and stuff like that because it's just more fun this way. Yeah, people are having fun with this. Yep. And, you know, the sponsors got to be happy. Yeah. There's I, a little, some eyeballs out there for some of these teams that are, you know, in like interstate batteries and, you know, so on and so forth. I mean, uh, they're getting a little bit of viewership. I was a little worried this week because it was started to get ruined when um, when they made the announcement of who was going to be in the race, who's locked in. And everybody starts complaining about why is so-and-so not locked in? Why is this person not locked in? Why do I, I have know, to race? We're doing that. We're doing the thing. It's like, don't let's not ruin it, guys. Let's not ruin it. Do you know how many guys tried to qualify for the? No, I'm looking at the iRacing or the uh, racing reference stats on this. Okay, how many? Yeah, 63 people try to make the race, and wow. two two more withdrew late. So, <laughs> 65 cars. Nice. Wouldn't that be great if we had 65 cars each week for 35 <laughs> spots? I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if it was if it was as cheap to get into as iRacing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and you had you got the same setup as the guy. You're got on to pull. something there, Eric. You're on to something. Yep. Um, we'll jump around in the notes a little bit cause I've got this at the end, but, uh, they're going to change things up a little bit this weekend for the race at Bristol. Um, Bristol, by the way, for I racing, I think this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be a cluster this weekend, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Hopefully it, it works out well. Um, let me click on the link here. It was, uh, they're running, a, a some races Friday night, um, or Saturday night, which will be an actual, um, like normal Saturday night series, a bunch of ARCA drivers, Xfinity drivers, truck series drivers, ARCA drivers, Mexico and uh, Euro series drivers are going to race, uh, battle it out um, with heat races and a main event and all that. Um, none of them will qualify for the show the next day. Uh, the Sunday show will be set in advance. They will run two heat races prior to that. Everybody from the heat races will transfer into the main event. So 
a little bit different this week. Let's see how that mm. goes. Um, Food City Showdown is at 1 p.m. on Fox. So the main event is on at 1 p.m. at Fox on Fox, like right. then. So very nice. And I mean, these guys are these guys are are putting the time into it. They're I mean, they spent their whole morning on uh, on Sunday morning last week getting ready for it and uh, practicing throughout the week and all that stuff. Um, some of the um, Vince Welch had a bunch of tweets, uh, during the race talking about what it took to put the show on. And I guess the, the week before he was saying that the decision wasn't made until the day of on the pre-race invocation and all that stuff. Um, whereas this week it was decided Wednesday and set in advance and, and all that. So, um, this week they had a bunch more setups with cameras inside of the driver's homes so they could get, you know, onboard shots in quotes, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So there was a lot more preparation that went into it this week than did the prior week. It was really thrown together in a very last minute thing the first week. So, um, I don't know. It, it keeps getting better. So, yeah, very good. I mean, if awesome. I could choose the real thing over this, I would choose it in a second, but right now this is what we got. That's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You gotta take what you can get at this point. Exactly. You're stuck at home with, uh, no live sports. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Uh, let me see here. Is there anything else I want to go over from the iRacing stuff? I, uh, James, did I miss anything? Is there anything worth? Mm, not that I'm not that I'm aware, man. This was something like I didn't tune into it, but I'm not gonna lie, I was checking out the highlights yeah. when it was over. So I, I one other thing to do with the with the iRacing thing too is they did. You know, we were talking with our buddy Todd, um, and he he made a comment that he thought it'd be cool if they did this even after the series started back up. And I said, yeah, I don't know if it's really worth it. Well, NASCAR is interested in continuing it in some form or fashion. So uh, maybe we'll see something like this in the off season next year or something like yeah. that. But yeah, um, it would be a great way for them to keep the sport kind of going, yeah. you know, during the off season. If the drivers are interested in it, or I'm sure they could find some. Right. You could find 35 relevant drivers. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, this is great to get kids involved. I'll tell you, it's this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids are all on Twitch already watching watching video games. That why not have them watch some NASCAR and want to go to the track? So, right. It's a, it's a win <laughs> win win win. And there's the dog. Win 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 situation <laughs> for everybody. There's no reason to not do this. <laughs> Poor no, Bella. Really, you're lucky that this is a coronavirus podcast. You can get away with it, dog. That's fantastic. <sighs> Gotta love it. Cramped up in this house. Okay, we're done. Hey. <laughs> All right. Let's talk some actual NASCAR news, James. We've got a little bit. Some, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the first news is not in, in NASCAR news, but it involves NASCAR. Uh, some Indianapolis Motor Speedway announcements this past week. The Indy Grand Prix, I don't know what it's actually called, but the, the road course that they run prior to the Indy 500 has been moved, as has the 2020 Indianapolis 500. So the Indy 500 will run August 23rd now, which I believe is the same weekend as Dover for the Cup Series. I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think you're Dover right. Dover or Richmond? I don't know. It's one of those tracks. But who knows what the trucks or what the Cup Series is going to look like? Um, but the IndyCar Grand Prix has been rescheduled for Fourth of July weekend and will be a double header with a NASCAR Xfinity Series the day before the Brickyard 400. So we finally got our NASCAR IndyCar uh, double header, James. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Who knows yeah. what'll happen? But oh well, yeah, I think we'll be back to back to racing by July. I hope. I would hope. Yeah, I would hope. Yeah, this is cool. I think uh, obviously the schedule is going to be completely unlike anything we've yeah, ever seen. It's going to be ridiculous uh, across across. This isn't just across NASCAR. <laughs> no. This is across all motorsports and all sports in general. Everything. Yeah, we're we're still trying to figure out if we're going to determine, you know, a hockey champion, a basketball champion, and right. and uh, if we're going to even have a baseball season still. So, um, so yeah, no, this is the perfect opportunity. I think you said it last week, or it came up in discussion last week. You know, this you you've got a free pass yep. to do whatever you want to do. So Roger Penske, kudos, man, yep. make it happen. I want to see it. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I think it's it's a good way to bring more exposure to both series. Um, brings a little bit more interest into that road course race with the Xfinity cars that really I don't think was that interesting. And one thing that could make it even more interesting is Jimmy Johnson said he's interested in running the IndyCar race on July 4th. That would 4th. be fantastic. That would be awesome. I mean, he's already going to do it anyway. Why yeah. not do it a year earlier? Well, there was uh, also a whispering that Tony Stewart <laughs> could 
run all three yeah races but which is not going to happen but that's i all feel fun. like i still say that they would have to change the rules in the indycar series to allow a wider body for Tony. i Stewart said to wider it. seat i don't know but... man those things are pretty tight <laughs> <laughs> that burger well, king sponsorship didn't do anything good for tony stewart no he had that for a couple of years too long <laughs> yeah no but uh i would love to see him run uh, jimmy johnson that is i would love to see him i mean why not especially yeah. if uh if the rumors are coming coming out now, they're starting to trickle out now that he's going to stick around another year. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't even put that chance. in the notes, but yeah, there's, there's rumors about that as well. well. I mean, I figure we're talking Jimmy. Let's let's go into it. But yeah, he uh, this is a great opportunity. This is something he wants to do. Um, but he's going to be there. Let's do it. Get him a seat. Somebody will put him in a seat. Somebody's got you don't you don't leave seven seven time out. This is what he wants to do. He wants to start dabbling in this stuff, and this is a great way to dip his toe in. He's already done the F1, you know, seat swap, so he's, you know, he wants to do this stuff, and by God, let him let him do it. He's earned the right to do anything he wants to do. I'd like to see a couple other cup drivers put put in for this, too. I yeah, mean, I'd like to see the KB show get involved. Yeah, Kyle would Kurt, be a good one to do it. I want to see Kurt run another uh, IndyCar race because he did so well his first go at it. Uh, I think he'd do a good job. Larson, I'd love yeah. to see Larson out there. Well, and a lot he, of the worry that you have as a NASCAR driver getting into an Indy car is, is gone with the windscreen they have now, too. Yeah. So that helps. It's a lot yeah. safer than it was before. You're on a road course, and you're not doing the scary, you know, crazy ovals yeah. at 230 miles an hour. Right. Yeah, they still get moving decent at Indy, but, no, I mean, mostly it's a straightaway. You know, you've got, they've, yeah. got, the, they've got the dog leg in, in what is turn one on the oval. That slows and you've them got down. run up on that straight. Exactly. You don't yeah. have you're not going right in the turn either. So Yeah, other than the yeah, fact that's a great you, spot. The first turn on the first lap is nuts. And other than that, it's a pretty yeah, we, pretty calm yeah. track. So kind of like uh the Roval a little bit. You got yeah. a chaotic, yeah, heartburn turn as they call it, right? So yep. um yeah, no, that's I think that's a good point. A, that is one thing interesting about that turn for the Xfinity race that you don't have with IndyCar is IndyCar quit doing the the double file restarts. And so they they have that start at the beginning that's crazy going right. to turn one, but every other start is just a normal start. Whereas Xfinity, when they restart going into it's turn one, it's a dive one, bomb show. Every yeah. time there's going to be a spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's cool. We're going to have Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart racing on the same weekend oh, again. It would be awesome. Good stuff. I want Tony to come and do it. I, I would love it. He could run that road course. Yeah, he could get in there. Oh yeah. I'm not sure how well he would do, but. Yeah, he do in an Indy car. I think he'd do pretty well. The Xfinity he car says probably decent. It's hard. It would be. Yeah, he said an Indy car now is obviously nothing like what he's no. ever driven before. But no. you know, I mean, no, the guy's but... got an F1 shop right next door. I think he can figure it out. You know, I mean, again, I say this as somebody who's never gotten in any of these cars, and probably would crap their pants if he ever got in an Indy car. But I feel like the Indy car would be a lot easier to drive than a Cup car. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Handling wise. Yeah. I mean, road course racing is not my thing, period. I've always sucked in the on the road courses and games and stuff. So I, I don't have the timing that I need and understand how to brake and turn and all that. Braking yeah. the whole thing. It's all about braking. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've got the NASCAR braking method where you brake in the turn, whereas road course, you brake before the turn. You don't ever hit the brakes when you're turning. Right. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> not an expert. I'd, I'd have to have spend some time with Boris said before I could get in a. Yeah, exactly. Coach. Ron fellows. Yeah. One of those guys, Max Pappas. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we get excited about keep, some, some racing. I, I want to keep the game going, Eric. I want to see how many road course ringers we can, we can not name. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. sorry. I digress. <laughs> um, yeah. So we get some positive racing news there, but we also get some negative racing news in that, uh, the Virginia governor issued a stay-at-home order uh, last week through June 10th. Oof. Problem with that being that May 9th is the Martinsville race. And so it's looking very much like we will not be going back to racing May 9th, which I don't think is a big surprise because I th kind of think a lot of us were pretty skeptical about that date. Um, yeah. But this pretty much sets it in stone. I mean, unless... I don't think, yeah, I don't think we're racing in May at all. I think no. June is the earliest we'll be, we'll be back to yeah. any sort of any sort of sports. I, I think. think I'd be pretty comfortable to say mid June. We'll be back going before that. It's pretty iffy. Yeah. We're, so, st we're sketchy. This time that is that pushed. is as we start April right now. <laughs> yeah. The timeline keeps getting pushed and pushed and it's yeah. just, you know, that is what it is, man. You, you know, we're going to have, we have to ride the wave, Yep. It's, you know, for lack of better terminology, that's what we're trying to do here. So yep, could be uh, worse. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I hate it for, you know, every sport, you know, we've got, I mentioned hockey and basketball on hold right now because, you know, we don't know if they're going to finish their season or if their seasons are completely canceled or what. Which so. I believe that the NHL commissioner basically told teams to be ready to play hockey in July. Yeah. So I think that's what the NBA is going to do too. I think the NBA yeah. is going to figure something out and we're going to see some weird stuff, mm-hmm. but um, the sports calendar in the fall is going to be absolutely <laughs> out of control. Yeah. We're going to be cramming a lot of sports in the, uh, this cut this summer into fall i think yeah we won't have enough time for all of it that's for sure yeah yeah with three nascar races a week if yeah. that's what they want to do yeah. I, don't I don't know what they're going to do man i really nascar is going to be really close have to really consider shortening the complete schedule i don't even know how they're going to i do don't that. think they're going to but, but i think you're gonna, they're going to shorten races i think you're going to end up with you're going to end up with races where we qualify and race and yeah but i it. Yeah, but that how how much does that really shorten the road time that these guys are on? Couple I mean, they're days. still Yeah, but you're still traveling a long way back and forth. You got to get cars prepped and ready. How do you turn everything around so fast? Yeah, you start doing double headers. Now you got two cars in your rig. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a logistics nightmare. It is. I'm glad that's not my job. That's not my job. You know, and I wouldn't we've got time. I mean, there it certainly could you could certainly push the series later if you had to also. Well, you I know it's not anything the, anybody wants to do, but you could finish the Cup Series season in November, December. I mean, oh, the yeah. end of November, December, if you had to. You're yeah. racing a championship race in Phoenix. It's not going anywhere. Right, exactly. Um, you know, you've got to worry about of got, that late, you got late Martinsville. Martinsville late, yeah, yeah. You can move that stuff around if you have to. Late Bristol, you know, late season Bristol is going to be a ran, problem. We ran New Hampshire on Thanksgiving weekend. We did do that, yeah. We ended the season in New Hampshire, yep. Mm-hmm. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you really want to know what it's going to be like, let's look at that race. It was there was no pomp and circumstance. It was it was basically wasn't even really a race. It didn't even feel champion, real. So yeah, the champion was already crowned. Yeah, it just was. It was just a, a you know an afterthought kind of, and that's I think that's what a lot of these are going to end up being, unfortunately. Yeah, but you yeah. just got to get through it. You got to get through the year somehow. You can't just scrap the whole thing and yeah, you know, there's money to be made still, and they need to make it right now because well, some of the teams are asking NASCAR to to upfront some of the money for the charters because they I have okay I have an issue with this yeah <laughs> I'm glad you brought this up I actually, <laughs> yeah I didn't have it I, in the notes so I actually tweeted about it today <laughs> okay I agree NASCAR should be supporting their teams but if NASCAR is supporting these teams and and giving them some upfront you know cash cash mm-hmm. flow I do not want to see any layoffs from these teams yeah you better not there better be there better be a layoff freeze that's true because if if you're cutting back and you're still getting an influx of cash, I'm going to I'm going to come on this podcast. And I'm going to rant. <laughs> I'm going to be really mad. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That's, that's right. Much, that's pretty much all I have to say. That's but a good point. These teams are already laying laying, te- you know, people off. And, it, you know, the heck with the charter teams. Why aren't we supporting all the teams if we're going to do it then? Right. I know the charter teams are the fully invested teams and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, this is an unprecedented event. I think, you know, we could stand to protect all of the entities of the sport at this point. Yeah. The tracks included everybody. I mean, I mean, they'll, you know. they'll, they'll get their $1,200 from Trump. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're free. Yeah. They're free money. James it's free money there. Hey, that's yeah. Yeah. My, <laughs> I'm looking forward to my free money. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I might buy money. an iRacing racing rig with it. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna. Well, shoot. I'll say it. My my money goes to everybody else all the time. I want some. <laughs> there. There you go. <laughs> that, <laughs> if that gives you any of my political leanings, I'm just kidding. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just joking, people. Just jo- <laughs> yeah, keep that politics out of here. Yeah, we don't who, want to talk about that Who stuff. mentioned Bro. Trump anyway? Yeah. Freaking idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't say that. <laughs> no, not Trump. Me for mentioning oh. Trump. Not Trump. No. No, I, I'm not going there. All right. Uh, well, let's that part of the podcast. Yeah, we'll let, take let, that out. let's move on before we get ourselves in trouble. Um, speaking of delays, uh, NASCAR is expected to delay the next gen car uh, debut as well. Um, Jenna Fryer did some reporting last week. Word is that there's no decision made yet, but it's being discussed and likely will take place because, hey, they need to test this thing. Can't do it right now. And when we get rolling again, they're not going to have a lot of time to do it. So it's looking yeah. like it's probably going to get delayed at least a while. So. I don't know why we just don't start saying 2022 for all this stuff. Yeah. 
I don't even don't don't bring it in halfway through the season. No, Let's just, don't do that. I think we did that yeah, with the COT. I, that was a bad idea. Yeah, we got a again unprecedented time, so we have to push everything back here. Yep. That's just my personal feelings on it. I don't, I don't want to see this car next year at all if, if you can't get it right. Don't rush the thing. Yeah, please don't rush it. We Again, we rushed the COT. It was not ready for prime time. It was a terrible car. Let's not do that again. Look at what it cost us. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that a lot of the problems that NASCAR has was caused by that car. Let's yeah. not do that again. Man, COVID-19 has broken our will in many different ways. <laughs> and this is just another thing yeah. that's like, you know what? We, if this had, if, if there was no reason for this to be pushed back, yeah, then we could say, well, come on, let's get it out there. Let's move. But there, I mean, it's, it's doesn't make sense. I've got to say though, all these people that are, that don't want to stay at home right now and don't want to do their part to help with social distancing and put an end to this thing. Those people had better damn well fill the stands at these tracks when we go back racing. Yeah. These yeah. tracks should be sold out. You guys miss NASCAR, get there to the track and support them. TV ratings play. down, track attendance up, yep. please. Exactly. Not but. that we don't want people watching races, but I think we're all going to be sick of looking at the TV by the time this is over with. Yep. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. What else do I got here? I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think I covered all the news. That's pretty much it, man. Yeah. Let me see if there's anything new on the old Twitterverse. It's uh, fun to have real NASCAR. Not that iRacing is not a real thing. It's virtual, right? That's what they keep. That's the word I keep hearing, the buzzword virtual. Right. But it's nice to have real NASCAR news like start to trickle in. I'm guessing that Christopher Bell won tonight. That wouldn't surprise me. Because I see a... He's Aaron, the king of dirt on iRacing, too. That's a just ridiculous. Aaron Bearden puts up a, a um, image that's it's a two guys like arm wrestling and one says real racing, one says esports racing. And in the middle says Christopher bell winning on dirt. So <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing bell got the win. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, he's getting better at that stuff. I got to give him credit for that. Yeah. He used to be a punch machine. He still is, but he's getting better at that stuff too. Yeah. I'll have to uh, check that out. Um, Trent Ivy won the World of Outlaws late model race. Um, anyway, that's you guys all check it out. You'll know before I even. Uh, Eric, is what know. we're is what we're doing now? Is this what we're going to be doing in twenty years? And that and it's going to be normal. What's that? Watching virtual cars uh, race. Very possibly. I mean, when when they, you can't run actual gas powered machines anymore and stuff, that's this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, possibly. A lot safer, man. We don't have the Ryan Newman situation. Food for thought. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very possible. Um, we have time to think now, which we haven't had before, and it's very dangerous. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have time to think. I'm still busy as crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, me too. <laughs> my busyness hasn't stopped. I know that. Both my wife and I are essential workers still, so we're still working our butts off, unfortunately. Well, no, fortunately. Don't, don't, unfortunately. I, no, don't take it that I'm, I'm jealous of people who aren't working right now. I'm very, very happy with the fact that we're still working. Trust me, I spent Sunday. I made my week this week to where I could take Sunday, and it was just a day. I could just do what I want to do. I could lay around. I could be lazy and watch the race. And it sucked, man. I was so freaking bored. That race got done and I had nothing you to do. Go, yeah. <sighs> you have nothing. You have never been this not busy on a weekend. Not in a long time. Yeah. It's not it's since been, I was younger. Yeah. It's been a while. Even then I worked on Saturdays back then. So I only had Sundays. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're our house is pretty much humming along as normal other than we don't leave. Yeah, it's just continued chaos, and our daughter's loving every second of this. <laughs> Gets to be home with mom and dad all the time. I can't tell if the dog likes it or not yet. She seems to be, she seems to enjoy it some of the time, but then other times she just like, get you're away from me. My nap. <laughs> yeah, you're ruining my nap. Yeah. yeah. Well, see if it was just you and Kay, the dog probably wouldn't mind. Yeah, the boys don't bother her at all. She she's oh. she's always ignored the boys. If she wants to get involved with them, she'll go over by them. But for the most part, she just ignores them. So. See, the, she she has the whole well, I was here first. Oh yeah, before you boys were around. Yeah, yeah. there's two yeah. there's two bean bags in the house that are the boys' bean bags, and she has discovered they're comfortable, and she has claimed both of them. They are hers now. 
So that's great. The boys will be laying on him and she just sits there and pouts. And as soon as they get up, you can hear her rustling around on it, getting herself comfortable on one. That's fantastic. Yep. Yeah. See, our basset hound just looks for different places where he can sleep in the house. (laughs) Sometimes he sleeps downstairs. Sometimes he sleeps upstairs. I'll be working in the office and sometimes he'll sleep right outside the door (laughs) or Ellie will be sleeping and he'll go in her room and he'll sleep in there. It's just, that's all he does. Bella never really cling to me a whole lot, but she has been since I've been home. So I've got one of the bean bags is under my desk right here at my feet. She's not down here right now because Kay's home. When, when Kay's home, she I don't exist. But if it's just me that's home, then I'm suddenly the greatest thing in the world, and she'll follow me around yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that's our house. I, Walter only follows me around. And then <laughs> if I'm not here, Aaron, then Aaron gets <laughs> uh, gets second fiddle. Yeah, my I went on a, on a weekend trip, work trip. Um, right at like what it must have been the most important part or point in a pug's age because she was my dog. Like she always laid with me. She didn't care what Kay was doing. She was always with me. And I went on this trip and I came home and she was Kay's dog from that she point She left on. her. Yep. yep. You left her. Yep. yep. So. I <laughs> See, I don't know what I would have to do to Walt to uh, get him to disown me. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's possible. I think he will continually come back. He might be the most loyal thing in my life. <laughs> That's I, <laughs> I will. I spoil Bella rotten. I so the other day we had steak. Now, albeit it was not very good steak. It was very. It was fatty. It was awful. And so, but instead of throwing it away, I saved a part of it, cut it up, put it in the fridge for Bella for the next day at lunch. Not only that, but I heated it up for her <laughs> when I went Jesus. to give it to her at lunch. Right, many. And she still thinks Kay is the best. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah she's spoiled rotten james wow it's pretty bad and she'd be That's even great. more spoiled if Kay wasn't here because Kay keeps me sane <laughs> <laughs> i was i would spend way too much on this stupid dog <laughs> fantastic <laughs> and she's looking at me right now yeah uh, talking about me who yeah. are you talking <laughs> yep yeah she knows she's she knows what she's doing she knows what she's got right yeah <laughs> uh ricky stenhouse jr race this weekend i think or tonight did he Oh, uh, no, he was watching. Couple... He, he was watching. Oh, okay. Racing. He got yelled at at the iRacing event, too. Did he? I didn't see that. Of course. Uh, yeah, I heard the quote unquote, of course, it was Stenhouse. Oh, yeah, I did hear it. Not, not from the officials. It was from one of no, the drivers. Yeah. No, no. But who was the driver who said that? I don't remember. Oh, my God. People listening to this are going to be like, it was blank. But I can't yeah. remember off the top of my head. I saw that in the radio. It's in the radioactive. Go view it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, definitely check out the radioactive. Um, yeah. Finally got a chance to listen to most of the Ken Schrader episode of Dale Jr. Download. That was pretty good. Good stuff. If you yeah, that's caught, good stuff. Haven't caught that. Listen to that. It's uh, definitely worth it. Kenny Schrader's got some good stories. Um, always a good listen. So Yeah, he's always been great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always forget how much I like Kenny Schrader. Remember when he was one of the hosts of uh, Inside Winston Cup? Yes, I do. Oh, my God. That was the heyday. Yep. Yeah, that was. Those were good times. Yeah, I always forget how fun his stories are. He's he's lived quite the life. And if you ever wanted to know, so there's there's been a lot of talk over the years about the week that the Dale Jr. trip with Kenny Schrader and how Earnhardt Sr. wrecked Schrader as a result of what Schrader allowed Jr. to get away with during that week. And <laughs> Jr.'s never told the story. He's just mentioned it. And there's been talk about it, but the story's never been told. Well, the story is told on the podcast. And it's it's pretty interesting. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. Deba- was it full blown debauchery? Uh, it's just a lot of drinking. Yeah, well, I, yeah, a lot of drinking. There's a there is a, a gentleman's club episode portion of it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not the man was sponsored by Budweiser for a long time. So yeah. he well he was n- probably good at it. N- yeah, well, both of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this junior was junior was like 16 at the time. Um, but yeah, would future become a future Budweiser driver, and Kenny was a Budweiser driver. So, isn't uh, Carl Edwards Kenny Schrader's uh, cousin? Something so, like that. I don't know about that, but so okay. Here's a part that's interesting. Um, They're related. Okay, I'll tell the story then. I'll I'll get into the story a little bit with the whole junior thing. So, um, basically, the whole strip cu- club incident is they show up at the strip club. They try to sneak Junior in. He's too young. Can't get in there. So they end up leaving him out in the parking lot. And he goes out and hangs out on a truck drinking beer with this guy that he saw a couple times during the weekend or the week and whatever. So he knew him in quotes, but didn't really know him. And that's they hung out there for the night while everybody was in the club. So 
several years later, Junior said he's sitting waiting after or waiting before driver intros in one of the media centers or whatever, and Carl Edwards sits down next to him and Carl says mentioned something about him, his dad being friends with him. He says, What do you mean? He says, He says, My dad knows he, he, you hung out with him. It was his dad. It was Carl Edwards' dad that Dale Jr. <laughs> hung out with on the truck drinking beers back when he was 16 years old. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was good. That's fantastic. Yeah, they are. Um, Him and Kenny are for, co- first cousin once removed, okay. whatever that means. That makes sense. So there why you go. Carl Edwards' dad yep. was there. Yep. There so, you go. Yeah. Full circle. Good stuff. Yeah, anyway, like I said, listen to the podcast. It's good. I always tell you listen to Junior's podcast. It's, it's, it's good stuff. So check that out. Uh, James, you got any shout-outs this week? Uh, I did. Um, actually you're going to love this one. Um, one of the Instagram accounts I follow, this is just one of my nineties being a kid of the nineties th- things. Um, Bigfoot monster trucks. Okay. They are pushing out so much great stuff on Instagram. It's a, like really? videos every day from the early nineties. Huh? Like and it's random stuff, truck tests, um, different events. And is, there, I, is this like an anniversary oh, for Bigfoot right now? I think it's 45 years. Yeah. Okay. So, cause I stumbled Bigfoot. across some Bigfoot stuff on YouTube and yeah. I don't know how I stumbled across this. So that must be why. Yeah. So if you're a kid who liked racing like me in the nineties, you probably got into monster trucks at some point. Right. Right. Well, big, oh, yeah. Bigfoot was my deal when I was a young kid. So I follow the account and it hasn't, has never really been super active, but lately um, they must have somebody new doing their social media because it's been fantastic. They're putting all this stuff out on their YouTube channel. Um, I follow them on Instagram, but I'm sure you can follow them anywhere and, and see most of the stuff. But they were showing uh, showing a test today of Bigfoot 11, just brand new out of the shop, doing a bunch of cool, you know, just, just tootling around. And I was fully into it. And it could be the most boring thing in the world to most people. But I was like, this is so cool. It takes me back. You know, I love that stuff as a kid. So anyway, that was my shout out. It's it's motorsports related, I guess. But... I don't think if you're you're you were a boy and into motorsports that you didn't especially in the 90s didn't get into monster trucks i mean especially in the 90s as a boy and a kid you have to watch monster trucks if you're that was, in, in any motorsports well monster truck as a boy too as a young as a young man girls too i guess i don't know if you like racing. yeah i'm not i'm not trying to be sexist i guess I'm just i don't saying know that. i yeah 20 we're in 2020 now i guess yeah <laughs> you gotta cover all your bases um yeah. but i whatever make me, me the sexist person james good yeah work. i did i didn't mean to i'm sorry <laughs> um I think uh, I think monster trucks were probably your introduction into motorsports. Yeah, if anything, that was probably the first thing you were drawn to. Was they these still? Things. I mean, they're still so catered towards kids. It's it's great family friendly fun. Yeah, Monster Jam's taken on. I mean, it's become a, a whole thing now. Right. But back then, I mean, it was legit. It was a legit racing. Well, back then you know, it was like it started US, out as a sideshow. Yeah, U.S. Hot Rod Association formed mm-hmm. after so long and. I mean, one of the one of the one of my favorite highlights is from the Pontiac Silverdome when Bigfoot first crushed cars in front of everybody. Do you do you remember that video? Yeah, I do. It's it's crazy to think that people were so excited in this and the Silverdome was huge. The Silverdome I mean, was biggest wrestling yeah ever. There's the a Sil- lot of big things that happened at the Silverdome. And I'm seeing that the Silverdome when I led the last time I saw it was so sad. But yeah. anyway, that's that's a whole other digression it's just a hole but, in the ground now but you think of all those people if you look up that video um out there and if if the silver dome is packed to the gills probably you know how how many thousands of people are in there and light bulbs are just flashing and all bigfoot is doing is crawling over a couple of cars and people were losing their minds what was that the early 80s or the late 70s eric probably yeah something like that and i mean they uh is they can't jump those trucks high enough but that was all they were doing back then right um, he was the first to do it. Nobody had seen it before. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's the thing is like those trucks weren't even built to do anything. They just, you could roll over the cars with them. I mean, yeah. they were basically like rock call. Rock on spring. Yeah. They were just bouncing around and actually Bigfoot was the first one to put, I was reading about all this stuff. Bigfoot was the first Good one stuff. to do with the, put in the, uh, this is your corner, by the way. I love this stuff. <laughs> they, uh, he was, they were the first ones to put in hydraulic shocks, which all the trucks have now. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the video I saw today. They were testing that that uh, that system out, and it's really cool watching that truck go go around and do stuff. It's just I don't know. I, I find it interesting. Hopefully, other people do too. I'm looking right now. I'm sure, people find that stuff interesting. They, I can't be the only one who likes that kind of stuff. No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm trying to see. Wikipedia used to have because it used to 
be have the record for monster truck show attendance. And maybe it doesn't have it anymore. Well, um, it does have the all time attendance record though. I think of an indoor stadium. Well, I know the Pontiac Silverdome was the, I guess the biggest quote unquote sporting event was the, uh, was WrestleMania three. Yeah. Well, until they went to Fort Hulk field, slammed, uh, Andre the giant until they went to Fort field, Fort field. And they broke the, the record, the attendance record, except that it was the typical, um, WWE breaking of the record, which wasn't accurate. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't actually Jeez. break the record, but the record for WrestleMania three was 93,173 people. Oof. Um, where did I see? The, yeah, I don't know. We're just stretching it out now. Um, John Pope John Paul II had mass there for 93,682 people. Um, there you a- go. April 17th, 2010, domination in the dome was the grand reopening of the Silver Dome with monster trucks. It's also there it one is. of the last events, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I take that back. Uh <sighs> Uh, 2016. Oh no, that's a, yeah. That's I a forgot. Story. I forgot the Silverdome had a second life for a hot second yeah. before it finally shuttered. Well, and the only reason it really shuttered was because the guy bought it, and then the storm came through and ripped the roof off of it, and he didn't have the money to fix it. Yeah, and he wanted the city to pay for it, and the city wasn't going to pay for it. No. You know, do you know that the ASA series race there inside the Silverdome? Inside the Silverdome. I never knew that. 1973 to 2000. Oh, no, that's that's the series of 73 to 2004. Um, let's see. It doesn't tell me when it was. But, yeah, there was at least one. What's that? I said, how did we get here? Know. This is great. I You're love We're talking about monster trucks, and we got into. I know. Got into uh, this. I love this stuff, man. Yeah, well, it's good stuff. The Silverdome for us is right in our wheelhouse because it's, you know. We're not too far from there, so. See, what frustrates me is that it was, it was one of the most popular Supercross venues. There used to be two Supercross races there a year. Um, they actually had the only back-to-back Supercross. So usually Supercross, you'd race on Saturday night, and you'd have a whole week to recuperate before the next round. Well, they used to race Friday night and Saturday night in Pontiac. So mm-hmm. you'd have literally one, you'd be racing the next day. So a lot of times, you know, you had to be real careful that first race. You didn't get hurt because you didn't have the week to heal up. So that was really interesting. Then they moved to Fort Field, and now, I mean, we just had our Supercross canceled this year. We've been without a Supercross a couple years. Um, You know, this is really, it always goes back to the same source of problems. It's the Detroit Lions' fault. Yeah, it is. If you guys were any good at any point in our lifetime, the Silverdome probably could still have some relevance. That is true. Now it's gone. That is true. And I saw the, uh, they started demolition on the palace. Did they finally? Yeah, that's sad. it's really creepy looking. If you look up those photos, that's yeah, I'll have to check that that's out freaking now. me out because I feel super old. Yeah, the I, palace I, is sad because that that building was still pretty nice. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, it's great. That really honestly was that the was the location. That was the best venue we had in Michigan. It um, was Cobo Arena was pretty good, too, but the palace was the best. Cobo yeah. Arena wasn't good because it was modern. Cobo Arena just was good because it was cool. And it was right downtown. Yeah. But, Cobo, uh, Hall's still, Cobo Hall's still downtown. Well, now it's but... the TCF Center oh, or whatever, yeah. and now oh, it's a hospital. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Detroit not, lore. It's a 900-bed hospital right now for COVID-19. So. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, no auto show this year. Auto show's canceled. Everything's canceled. Yeah, it is. Except for, just, except for uh, I saw horse racing was not canceled in Florida. 2020 just sucks. Oh, 2020 has been terrible. All right, let me get to my shout out now that you've derailed us. <laughs> that was so good. That was a great derailment. I'm going to make that my new goal is to derail you <laughs> at, the, well, at least until we're out of quarantine. So I'm going to probably butcher this name, but my shout out is Evan Pasako. Do you know who Evan Pasako is, James? Enlighten me. He is the voice of the e E-ra- NASCAR Coca Cola <laughs> iRacing series. It is. I, that was like a year ago. I found it. I was able to look it up and follow him on Twitter. And I'll tell you what, guys, he is one of the greatest. He's like the greatest announcer that doesn't have a top of the line gig. He is excellent. He could easily go right to MRN Radio and fit right in. Um, there was a lot of talk about him this week after so many eyes on the NASCAR iRacing series. Um, as a result of this whole shutdown and everything, um, 
there were some tweets from big wig saying that this guy is going to, you're going to be hearing this guy for many years to come. And I've been saying that for a couple of years. He does a great job. If you go to the iRacing page and check out the highlights from any of the NAS- NASCAR series races, uh, you'll hear his voice. He's the lead announcer for the series and he is spectacular. So check him out. And yeah, there you go. I feel like he has a dirt track um, voice. Mm-hmm. He's, I think he sounds just perfect. He sounds, he sounds a lot like the uh, sprint cars guy. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's where we got into our argument, I think, a year ago on this podcast. Probably, probably. I think we brought him up last week again, too, didn't we? I think we talked about him last week, and I couldn't think of his name. So, anyway. There you go. I've, I've been trying to find out who he was forever. He actually, I got to, I watched the beginning of the broadcast, and he introduced himself this week. And so, I finally got it. <laughs> Track <Yeah>. down. <laughs> <laughs> that's that crack uh, journalism right there. There you go, man. That's that's my job. <laughs> Uh, anything else, James? We've stretched this out to 50 minutes. I think we've gone long enough. Is there anything we else? Good, man. Yeah, we, the, uh, the rambling editions of the Super Speedway podcast continue. Right. No, I think Hopefully we still keep getting a little bit of trickle of news here and there so we can still have some news coverage. Yeah. Other than, if, if not, we're going to be talking about uh, an iRacing race, and then it's going to be a, more rambling. So. Yeah. yeah. You need to start watching the iRacing stuff so we can talk about that more. Oh, uh, man. Okay. I will uh, I will try. You're probably going to watch the try. worst one this weekend because I think Bristol's going to be a crapshoot. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll try. I'll, I will give it my, my darndest. <laughs> All right. Good. I've been playing in my week, so my, my Sunday is open. I told my wife, Depends- I said... There is one thing right now in my life, one thing I look forward to. That's all that I have left. Yeah. Don't yeah. take that from me. <laughs> I am still, even though my marathon is can't is the technically the race is canceled. I am forging ahead and I'm going to do something with this training I've been doing. <laughs> and uh, I have to do uh, 16 miles on Sunday, but I'll make, I'll make, uh, I'll try to make time. I'll, I'll see if I can sneak it in there. You're going to see the nice thing about it though, James, is it will be on YouTube afterwards. You can always catch it afterwards. Yeah, there you go. I can always, yeah. Just see? don't, don't, t- don't check the Twitters. Don't and, stay uh, off the Twitters. Stay yeah. off the Twitters and probably stay off Facebook. Cause Todd and I'll probably be talking about it when it's done. So that's what yeah, I do. Are- that's what I do with you guys during a regular race weekend. When I'm busy is I just shut up. I mute the channel. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, because I know you guys are going to spoil it. Uh, try not to. No, it's usually Todd. Yeah, I know. Which is funny because he's at the track, but it's still usually Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Todd. Yeah. I do feel bad for him right now. Yeah. Got to get that man back to work. I know. I know. We need to get him on the podcast. So what we need to do. He's yeah, kinda, we should do that. He's kind of falling off the face of the earth. So we need to. We'll. I'll reach out to him. We'll try, see if we can get him on next we week. We can do the three man pod pretty effectively, I think. Yeah, we could do it. I got to rig up a couple things here, but I can make it happen. Sweet. So, yeah. Uh, James, where can they find you on social media if they want to talk to you during the week? At James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Super Speedway. Our website is www.thesuperspeedway.com. You can find our podcasts on there, all the past episodes. Check those out. Interviews with some people in the industry, uh, coverage of races, photos, whatnot. Check that out. The Super Speedway.com. Uh, you can find the podcast in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and SoundCloud, wherever you find us today. We hope you subscribe and continue to listen. And if you want to become a part of the show, uh, help us get to the track when there's a track to get to. Uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash the super speedway. With that, we go iRacing again this weekend. We go to Bristol Motor Speedway. We get two days of racing of iRacing this week. So check that out. Saturday Night Thunder, they're calling it. And uh, the big show on Sunday at 1 p.m. at uh, the Food City, whatever the heck it is, at uh, the virtual Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be back next week to talk about that, ramble on, and, uh, I don't know, fill 40 to 50 minutes worth of space with uh, time you won't get back in your life. So There you go. <laughs> we are here to entertain you. Yep, we are here to waste your time. And we the, I know everybody has a lot of time to waste right now, so we are here to serve that purpose. And until then, yeah, everybody, and, <laughs> go ahead. And, well, yeah, go. I was just going to say, we, I think we're doing this partially to ha- keep our own sanity, too, aren't oh, we? I mean, that's, I mean that, honestly, that's the way I, the reason I'm doing it is I don't want – I want this little bit of normalcy still. Yeah, me too. I mean, even today, like, I was like, oh, man, we got to do this again. What are we going to talk about? But it's like, no. It's fun just to talk to you. So, I mean, we might as well out. record it. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. So, all right, everybody. We'll be back next week to talk about Virtual Bristol. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. <laughs>